Mm. Mm. Hi there. A lot of people ask me the same question over and over and over again. Uh, well, actually, two questions. One, my guitar won't stay in tune, and two, how do I put strings on a guitar? So, there are instructions on the website, but this uh, particular little podcast will be going out on the website as well. So, to that end, let's go. You acoustic guitar players, in fact, hang on, just got to reach over there. You acoustic guitar players uh, probably find yourself having all sorts of little problems like um, you tighten the string up and it goes pop and then you're looking for one of these. You're looking for a bridge pin. Here's the secret. When you put the string in the hole, put the pin down and wait till you hear it click. When you hear it click or you hear it go boop, that's telling you that the ball is nice and hard up against the inside of this of this bridge, or actually of this bridge plate for another time, different part of the video and different part of the website too. Now, um, in so far as what we've got here, again, giving it a bit of a point, I'll do this very quickly, get this out the way, one, not the right one, ah, good, good, got to get the ones with the little black dots on top. I could tell you a funny story while I'm doing this, just like my John Lawson does. I'll try later. So we better get this out the way. We've just oh, fret dressed this guitar. Oh, by the way, while I'm at it, getting bridge pins out of a guitar. All you need is the same thing that you use to cut your strings off. Lightly get under and pull. Make sure you take the tension off the string first, but that's how you do it. All right, down to business. This is the business end. This is the reason you're watching this amazing video. <laughs> okay, down, keep it under tension. Come around once. I'm doing this to stay out of the light. So round once, again, see where we are now. Now I'm gonna show you this bit. This is the kicker. Straight through, he said as he tried really hard to do it. I'll do it down here. Jamie, I hope this is not getting in. Okay, we're going coming out between the first and the second wine. Can we get a picture of that, James? Mm -hmm. All right, now we pull it up, nice and tight, like thus, and give it a really firm 90 degree bend. So the first thing you're gonna find is people on YouTube say three, four wines, as many wines as you can. It's absolutely not true. Firstly, the reason strings stretch is less to do with the length of the string and more to do with getting that string to bind tightly with no slack around that machine head. You do that and you will have your string settling in in no more than five to 10 minutes of play. As I wind this string on, and by the way, if you do this method, you're not gonna be sitting there winding all night to get your string on, it will lock. Can you see that? So if you look at the machine head, if you look at this post, did Jamie get my fingers here? The post goes like that. It's designed to crimp those strings together. Therefore, when we go through that hole, come out between the two, and as we wind up, we're locking that string off, and we've locked it off and only used one and a half, maximum two winds. Now, why is that good? I'll tell you why that's good. One of the biggest things that we get are people who can't get, or is people who can't get their strength, they get their guitar to stay in tune. Nine out of 10 times, it is the machine head or the application of the string installment. Hey, that was pretty cool. This is high tensile steel. It doesn't stretch that much. Where the guitar will have trouble staying in tune or will keep going out of tune is when we have slack in that wind, and particularly on the wound strings, they're the ones that are worst for it. Gee, I'll get that. <laughs> so that's it. That string's done. All good. So I'm just gonna go through the rest of this so you can watch, and I'll do it very carefully and very slowly. Again, hold the string tight. You'll need both hands for this. Bring it around. Maybe hold it with your fingernail if you have to, and then go through that hole, if I can find the hole, there we go and out between 
the first and the second wind. You got that, Jim? Mm hmm Okay. Around again. Now, I know this is boring for the fourth time, but I've got a six, I've got all six to do. Again, boom. Okay, the B string and E string. If you wish, you can always put an extra wind. I'm not going to because I don't need to, but just in case you're worried about it slipping. Again, oops, I'm gonna come around your way, James. Through, 90 degree bend at the end, voila. Okay, now. Now you'll notice I just gave that a bit of a, a, bit of a uh, just to kind of get some tension happening. Again, last but not least, the thin E string. By the way, I could show off and do and, and do the three minute restring, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, now I said there's a kicker at the end of this and this is the kicker. Let me just grab my coffee. Cheers. James makes a fine cup of coffee. <laughs> Now here I have some long pointy nose pliers with a bit of heat shrink on the end of them. Now you can use masking tape or any, anything you want because you don't want the metal to be clamping directly onto the string. Now, this is gonna be interesting. If I tune this string up, watch this. I think that nut needs some work. That's how much slack in there. Give it another kick. Glory be, look at that. That string is completely settled. It is ready to rock. Okay, next. So what you've got there is one, two, three strings that are absolutely ready to go. It's not surprising that I've got, I get a lot of people who are going in for recordings or gigs, things like that, where they really need that guitar to actually stay in tune. People actually bring their, their guitars in just so I can restring them, which is quite nice, but it would be quite easy for them to do it themselves. It just takes a little bit of patience and a bit of practice. Okay, so again, we're gonna, oh, let's, let's hook this G string up. Here we go. Give that a bit of a stretch. Happy days. Now, I don't tend to do that on the E and the B. You can just give them a bit of a whack and they will go in pretty quickly by themselves. Now, if we've got enough time there, James, there's one little thing I want to tell you as well, guys. If you are someone who likes to tune in open tunings, particularly C or open D, if you find that when you tune down and then you tune up, there is a propensity for the G string or very often the E string to actually snap on the third or fourth time, here's the one. A little bit of inox. I can't recommend this stuff enough. It's fantastic, it's inert, it doesn't affect timber. Uh, it's food grade, I think it's even kosher. <laughs> so if you get a little bit of this and give it, come on Jamie over here, and give that a little bit of a squirt, you'll actually find that that will reduce the metal fatigue. What I mean by that is if you tune and retune, eventually without too much, well actually probably about the third time, it will snap about here because it gets fatigued. If you put a little bit of Lennox and don't use RP7 and don't use WD-40, that stuff has got Petros in it and it's also got very often little silicons and things like that. And that's not good for a guitar. Lennox is actually what it says, it's actually Lamsey. It actually comes from lanolin. So, amazing stuff. Hmm. I use it as hair gel, no. <laughs> awesome. Okay, and that, my friends, is that. Happy restringing. If you have any questions, you can always give me a call. Uh, bye for now, and we have more restring, uh, restringing instructionals coming up for classical guitars, uh, for Fender Stratocasters with vintage slot machine heads. It's all on its way. By the way, be sure to uh, check out the rest of our videos. There are some interesting and quite funny things, I think, in there and make sure you like us on Facebook.